to welcome you to the Conference Center of Geneva to talk about human rights. And we will be focusing most particularly on a particular case, that of Iran. And in this regard, we are lucky enough to have three speakers. To begin with, Caspian McCann, who is a human rights activist and was the fiancé of Na Neda Aga Sultan. I think everyone knows who I'm talking about because this has gone around the world. Thanks to internet on the 20th of June when she was killed during the post-electoral events in Tehran. We also have on our panel Shaheen Sayeri, who is the Director of External Relations of Com Human Rights Activists in, in Iran, and David Sorland, who is doing a PhD and is a specialist on internet freedom in Iran. And so we will be focusing on the internet here. I would like to introduce the subject. We have heard about Iran for quite a while now, above all about uh, Mahmoud Aminejad. We've also heard about all the different points of the nuclear program in Iran. And something new has appeared with the electoral campaign and the Green Movement, as we know it. This movement has been quite impressive. It is continuing even after the contested elections of the 12th of June. And it's interesting to hear the young people who spoke after this campaign. And some said every single drop counts to make an ocean. And it's true. Within this green movement, we should recognize that uh, there are extremely different uh, hopes that have been expressed. There have been hopes for a change of regime or for improvement, changes within the Islamic Republic. This movement is not necessarily an organized one, and people hold many different views. What particularly marked us last year when these demonstrations took place, and which uh, continued quite a while, until the 31st revolution of the Iranian revolution was that there were many occasions such as the Shura f that enabled this protest to continue. And what struck us, as I was saying, was the use of news technologies. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube were all used to broadcast images that we could see in the, in the cities in Iran. A professor was telling me this was the third technological revolution. The first was the constitutional revolution of 1906 when the telegraph played an important role. And then the 79 revolution with a cassette because uh, Khomeini had returned to Iran and cassettes, uh, tapes you were used to advance the cause and now it was the new internet technologies and we will be talking about this with David in, in a little while. The situation in Iran since last year's elections has changed greatly. We now have a slightly weakened regime with the supreme leader who has been con regularly contested by the Green Movement. And at the 31st anniversary of the revolution, we saw that there is a, rep a repressive apparatus that has been set up. And now we're wondering where this is going to go. And uh, the Green 
revolutionists staying abreast of the situation. Now concerning the attitude of the regime, what has struck me recently was that, that as Brahim Yazdi was arrested, he was the Prime Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs under Khomeini. He was an important figure at the time, and he no longer has great clout in Iran. He is, moreover, quite ill. He, he was arrested a few weeks ago, and that is a reflection of how weak the regime has become. I will stop here. I will give the floor to the speakers and to Caspian Makan to begin with, who will be giving us a, his painful personal account. I give him the floor. من ابتدا مطالبی رو عرض میکنم که از من خواسته شده که به اون اشاره کنم مطالبی I've been asked to speak about a very important question I was born in 1972 in Tehran and when I started school it was in 79 and that coincided with the, revol the religious revolution under Mr. Khomeini. At that time the schools had to close their doors, everything had stopped in the, in the country and even though um, Islam was present at the time. Nobody had really realized what this implied when an Islamic authority was, took power. And people were receptive to the promises made. They thought that there would be more well-being. They thought they would be better off. They thought they would have better, more political freedom. And that would be added to further freedoms, and therefore they supported the guide of the revolution. And the first thing that was done was to have the preceding government official, to have them step down, to have them either tortured or killed without trial. Now, my parents were civil s servants under the preceding regime, and they were also sanctioned, and their lives were put in, in danger. But my father was able to convince them that they were wrong, and he saved all of our lives. People had to line up in a very harsh winter in order to buy basic staples. But they took to the streets to demonstrate and our life was turned topsy-turvy. After a few months, schools opened again, but meanwhile everything had changed. I'd never seen such things before. The girls, who had been part of our class before, were separated. They were sent to a special school. Our teachers had to dress strangely, strange attire. They had to hide their hair, hide their bodies. 